30,000 websites per day are being hacked. Estimated was that 97% was automated. Now the good news is we can protect ourselves and our WordPress websites from all those automated attacks. To do that, we go to wpressdoctor.com slash solid and press enter. The link is also in the comments of this video, so feel free to use that also. And then we are at the website of Solid WP, a company I've been trusting my security of all my clients' websites and my personal websites for more than a decade now. And their products are really, really solid. What do we need to secure our website is of course the Solid Security. Now I've already created a tutorial about the basic version. In this tutorial, we will be using the pro version to secure our WordPress website. There are a few big differences between the basic and the pro version. For example, the pro version has a firewall built in with virtual patching provided with PatchTech. PatchTech has already provided a patch to run on your website, which is deployed immediately. This way, when a vulnerability has been detected, your website is instantly secured. So that's pretty awesome. And there are of course many more pro features that we will be discovering in this tutorial. So we go over here to products and we go to solid security and press explore. And then we click on buy one site now, or maybe you have more sites, that's okay. Then we press on checkout. And then click on continue as guest and fill in your email address. Then we press on continue. Then we fill out all our information in the checkout. And after that, we can press on continue to checkout. So you can choose to pay with credit card or PayPal. You can also choose to subscribe to the Solid WP newsletter. And after that, we press submit payment. Then you see a confirmation of your payment and then you can log in to Solid WP. In here, we can download Solid Security Pro. Press on download. And then we go to log in to our WordPress website. We are going to secure this website, which is my latest tutorial on how to build a professional website online. Let's go to WP Admin. On our dashboard, we go to plugins, add new plugin. Then press over here, upload plugin, and click over here to select the file we've just downloaded. And then we press install now. The final step is to activate the plugin. Well done. The very first step we go is press on here, Solid WP Licensing. Click on it. Make sure that this URL is completely correct and press save. Then we see this, the following product has not been licensed. To license this product to receive automatic updates, which are very important, we fill in the Solid WP username over here and the password we have generated when buying the products. And then we press on license products. And then we see this successfully licensed Solid Security Pro. You can see your member, your product, the product status, when it will expire and your remaining licenses. All right, excellent job. Now you can see over here, you have a new security menu item and also in here. The first thing we do is we click on this security button in here. Welcome to Solid Security. This is the first time wizard setup. I'm gonna walk you through this step by step so you can set up Solid Security Pro in the right way. First, we need to select what kind of website this is. Is this an e-commerce website? If you have WooCommerce on it, click on this one. Is it a network website to connect people and communities? Use this one, nonprofit, blog, portfolio, or brochure. In my case, this website is a brochure website to promote our business. Click on it. Now we have to choose, is this your own website? or is this a client website? This is important as you can change the capabilities of their user role within this WordPress installation. We are going to configure our own website. Then we say, yes, we want to require two-factor authentication for our users. Besides using their username and their password, they also need another device like a smartphone or a security key or a authenticator app. This is the best way to prevent hackers from trying to log into your account. Press next. We also want to enforce a password policy for our users. This means compromised passwords that are laying around on the dark web or way too simple passwords will not be accepted when they set them up. Press next. Here we can authorize our own IP address for not being locked out by solid security. Then we click on authorize my IP address. This way, this IP address can log into your WordPress website without being locked out by solid security. For example, when you just change your password and you're trying to log in again with the old password, you're being locked out after three times of trying. This way, you will never be locked out from your own website. Then we have the IP detection. Let's change this to security check scan recommended. Then we're gonna press on 
next. We have enabled two-factor, which is great. We want to enable passwordless login for some people use this, like passkeys or Windows Hello. It's all possible. And then there's also a trusted devices option, which still is in beta, so we're not going to activate it right now. Then we go to the next step, firewall. Then we want to enable the firewall rules, the local brute force, network brute force, magic links and we want to also enable the captcha scroll down then we're going to use the google as a recaptcha service version 3 and we need to get a side key and a secret key to get your side key and secret key right click on this one and press open link in new tab and then we are at the google recaptcha if you already have one site this is what you see if you're not logged in, you need to log in first. Then we click on this plus icon to create a new website. We're gonna label it the name of your website, in my case, mortgage website. And we're gonna use a version three, scroll down. Then we add in our domain name without HTTP or www dot, just like this and press submit. Here we go. Now we have the site key and the secret key. Then we're gonna copy the site key and we go back to our WordPress website, paste it in, over there, go back to reCAPTCHA, copy the secret key, go back to WordPress and paste it in over here. Then on reCAPTCHA, we press go to analytics. Then we're going to protect these actions, use on login, use on new user registration, use on reset password. If you have a blog and you get a lot of spam comments, you can also enable this one. You can use it on your comment section also. Press on next. We're gonna use default user groups. Click on it. Here we have all the user groups within WordPress. And if you have a WooCommerce website, you also see here customers. In the default user groups, we can specify the settings per group. You can also add your own group if you press on this plus icon. Let's scroll down as all these settings are pretty good. The administrators are able to manage solid security, enable dashboard creation, strong password, refuse compromised password, but we also can set a password age. When you enable this one, then the admins have to reset their password in a specific period of time. Very smart. And we also want to enable user logging. You can also press on edit group. You can change the name and all the capabilities. Now you can change all these user groups to fit your needs. For example, if you have editors on your website, make sure they cannot create a dashboard and they cannot manage shallow security because that should only be the job of the admins. For editors, you can also determine a password age and you can monitor their activity. Don't know if you want that, but it's possible. The same for authors, contributors, or subscribers. If you have a lot of subscribers on your website, then these settings are good to actually look at them and say, hey, is this what I want? Maybe you also want to force a password age. If you think the default settings are okay for your audience, then we press next. Then you need to fill in the email address from which solid security will send emails. In our case, we're gonna use matt at mortgagetv.com as this is the exact domain name as this website. Very important. Then the recipients, well, you can set it to all admin users or maybe you just want it to send only to you. That's completely up to you. I'm gonna send it to all admin users. And we press complete setup. Great work, your site is ready and more secure than ever. That might be true, but we're still going to configure a lot of settings. In this tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through all these options in the plugin. And we're going to start with go to the settings of Solid Security Pro. Welcome to the global settings of Solid Security Pro. In here, we have the lockouts. 15 minutes to lockout is great, seven days to remember lockout. I would say we're gonna change this to 14 days because all these settings are well known within the hacker community. After seven days, they can come back and try again. But now they'll see that they'll be locked out for 14 days. That's a long time. We're gonna ban repeat offender and the ban threshold is three lockouts. That's great. Then we're gonna change the lockout messages. First, we're gonna change this error. We're gonna change it to Payback time, you have been blocked. And then the user lockout message should be, whoops, you've been locked out for trying too many invalid logins. And then the community lockout message will be, your IP address has been flagged as a threat. Payback time. And then we have authorized host. This is a automatic feature that when you log in as a admin, your IP address will be whitelisted for 24 hours. Great feature. We don't have to change this, this is great. We have logging. Now, our logs could be in our database only, could also be on a file only, but also 
on both. There are downsides to all of them. If you use the database only feature and you already have a really big database and you have a lot of admins and you're also logging what the editors are doing, your database will grow and grow and grow even bigger. That might be a problem for the speed of your website. Then you should choose the file only option. If you just have a simple brochure website like this and people are only visiting and nobody logs in but admins, you can safely choose the database only. Again, if you have a big website, choose file only. In our case, we're gonna use the database only. Here we can specify the days to keep the database logs. 60 days is excellent. Then we have the IP detection, automatic, insecure. Let's use the security check scan. Then we have the user interface tweaks. High security menu and admin bar. They're talking about this button over here. If you click on this, you will see here notifications, new features. So I suggest we keep this on. Let's press on save. Then we scroll up and we go to features. The first thing we're going to activate is the two-factor authentication. This greatly increases the security of all your WordPress user accounts. Here we can see all the authenticated methods that are available for users to choose from. If you click on this, you can change it to all except email, or you can choose them to select them manually. Only the mobile app, for example, or only email or only backup authentication codes. In our case, I wanna let my users choose all methods. For the setup flow, you might want to disable this on first login. In our case, I'm not going to disable this because I want everybody also on the first login to really go and secure their website as we might set the standard for their mindset to how to work with passwords. Here we can change the onboarding welcome text. For example, in your company, you might want to make sure that you really enforce strong security. So then you can change this text to put more emphasis on it. Here we can enable the vulnerable user protection. If Solid Security notices that one user is being attacked, for example, or they have a weak password, it will force them to use two-factor authentication. A really good practice to keep this on. Then we can enable the vulnerable entire site protection. If you have outdated plugins or things that are exploitable, it will require two-factor authentication forced on all users on your website. This might be useful in the most cases. Scroll down. Then we can also use passwordless login. This is really great. If we scroll down, we can choose which authentication methods are available. For example, the magic link, you know them from your hosting companies, when you can just click this button to log into your admin dashboard, you're automatically logged in. I have a problem with that one because where do people save that magic link? In their email? What if their email gets compromised? On their dashboard? What if their computer gets compromised? I don't like, like this feature, so I'm going to disable the magic link. What I do like is the pass keys. If people use biometrics like Face ID, Touch ID, Windows Hello, the pass key is very useful. Let users use pass keys. That is actually a pretty good practice. And here you can enable it by default or disable it by default. It totally depends on the people you're working with. If your admins and your editors are well known with security, then you might want to enable it by default. If they have no idea, nobody uses biometric logins, then you should disable this by default. We're going to enable this, of course. And in a few minutes, I will demonstrate how to install this passkey with your WordPress website as a two-factor authentication method. Really awesome and they work really great. Passwordless login flow method first or username first, whatever you prefer. Then we can enforce passkey user verifications. If it's required, then the users need to put in their PIN or biometric authentication, but you can also do it preferred so they don't have to do this. It's completely up to you. If you want to use passkeys, I would say it is required, but it totally depends again on how experienced your admins and editors are. Let's scroll down. Then we have privilege escalation. If you need users to do something extra on your website for a temporary time, maybe a coworker needs to change a page which he doesn't have access to, you can enable this one and then you can give them more privileges. That could be useful in some cases. Then we go over here and we have trusted devices. 
I would not enable this one and it's still in beta. And of course, we want to enable pass keys. And we go to the last option of this page. Here we can change the age of our password. The password is now at 120 days. You can change this to 50 days or 30 days or whatever your company's password policy is. If you don't know what to do, just keep it on 120 days. Excellent. Press save. Then we scroll up again and then we go to the next step, firewall settings. In here, we want to ban users. We want to use the default ban list. It is from hackrepair.com and it's a very good list. So we want to use this on default. Then this is all good. You can limit the banned IPs and 100 is great. Just keep them like this. Then we have the firewalls rules engine. If we click on this one, we can change the violation max per IP address. Let's change this to Eight, and then he will be locked out a little bit earlier. Then we have minutes to remember. Let's change this from 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Then we go to local brute force settings. When someone tries to log in with admin user, it will be automatically banned. You should never ever have a user inside of your WordPress website with the username admin. That's the most used username around the world and is mostly targeted by hackers. If your username right now is admin, don't enable this one. If you have this right now, you go to users and we go to all users. Then you can see your own username right here. If this says admin, that's not okay. Click on edit. And then you can see that you, you are not able to change your own username. What shall we do? Press on add new user, add in a new username, for example, your first name. Then add in your email address, first name, last name, website, and make sure that your role is a administrator like this. Then we press on add new user, log in with this new user and remove your old admin user. This is something you need to do right now before we enable this feature. Make sure to do this first, then scroll down. As all these settings are known to the hacker community, let's change the max login attempts to three. And then we're gonna change the max login attempts per user to five, the safer it will become. Here we go, and let's go to the network Bruce Ford settings. If you want to join a network of sites that reports bad actors, make sure to put in your email address over there. I'm gonna do this because I hate bad actors. And then you can also opt in for email updates weekly. If you're interested in that, sign up. And we have the magic links. As I said before, I'm not a huge fan of these, so I'm going to disable the magic links. Then we go over here to the capture settings, and I'm a bit surprised that it is not activated over there because we already did this. Let's just copy and paste it real quick again. Because the protected actions, we put it on use on login and all these things. Then you can change to include the script on only required pages or on all pages. Let's say required pages. Then we scroll down here, you can change the language of Google reCAPTCHA and enable the opt-in and the on-page opt-in. Great, that's all good, keep it like this. Then over here we have the block threshold. If you notice that a lot of times you cannot log in because of the Google reCAPTCHA, you can lower the threshold right now to, for example, 0.4 or 0.3. The lower the threshold, the more will pass. 0.5 is actually what Google recommends. Then we have the lockout error threshold. Keep them the same, they're all good. Press on save and we scroll all the way up and we go to the site check. Click on this one. In the site check settings, we want to enable the file change. Very powerful feature. You get a notification if some files change on your website. However, we need to exclude certain files from your site check or else you will be going crazy with notifications. For example, you want to exclude caching folders of caching plugins and you also want to exclude backup folders as they continuously change and you get notifications all the time that you don't need. You go into WP content and look for all your caching folders. For example, I have an ET cache over there, which is from the Elegant Themes. I click on the highest folder and press select. Then I go to all in one backups and I press select. Then I can check over here if I have even more caching folders or backup folders. If you have none, that's perfectly okay, but make sure to have checked them. Also in here, you can go to themes. Maybe Diffy has his own caching in here. I don't think so at all, but you never know. So make sure to check everything for caching folders and some backup folders. If you don't have them, that's perfectly fine. If you do, make sure they are excluded over there. And we're gonna scroll down. 
Then we want to keep this powerful feature enabled. If your WordPress core files are being updated or your plugin or your themes, it will compare them with the originals to see if everything is well and it's not a malicious change. Then we scroll down. We have side scan scheduling, very powerful. We want to enable this one. User logging, we also want to enable this one. And the last thing we have version management. Now, not updating plugins and WordPress is the most common reason that websites get hacked. In our case, we want to automatically install the latest plugin updates. Now, these are very powerful features that you want to enable. If you don't have a lot of plugins, you want to enable all of them. If you don't trust some plugins, you can use custom. And then we have an entire list of all your plugins, which should be automatically updated. If you have a lot of plugins, in my case, I've created this website with zero plugins, only Solid Security Pro. So I should choose this one and press on enable. If you don't trust a certain plugin for functionality on your website, or it might be buggy once you've updated, then you should delay it with, for example, three days. Or you can completely disable it, but I don't recommend it. Keep those plugins and these themes automatically updated. Also with your themes, if you don't trust them updating your theme, I have never had any problems with Divi since 2014 that they first released it, and they're updating it very regularly. So I would say, to be sure to delay it for three or four days. So when real problems come, they already put in a fix. But the best practice is of course to enable it. Then we scroll down and if you have multiple WordPress websites installed on your own server and you can access them from here, which is not a good security practice, then you should really enable this one, scan for old WordPress sites. It will scan all the folders of your installation to see if there are any old WordPress version there. That might be useful, but it will scan it every single day. And that costs, of course, resources. If you are absolutely sure you don't have old WordPress sites on your installation, then we should disable this option. And you better be sure because that's a really bad practice to have them laying around. How to update if it fixes vulnerabilities on your WordPress website. The scan shows an old plugin. It has vulnerabilities, it immediately updates it. Real good practice, keep this on and press save. Then we scroll all the way up and we go to utilities in here. Then we want to enforce all connections to go through SSL. If you have an SSL certificate via your hosting company like this, you need it of course first. Solid security will not provide an SSL certificate. Then we can here enable database backups. If you click over here, we can schedule our database backups. You can also use a dedicated plugin for this, which I recommend. If you don't have a backup system in place and you don't trust your hosting company to do this completely, or you just want to have your own database stored somewhere, then you could schedule a database backup. This is the number of days between the database backup. I would say three is pretty enough, but if you have a web shop, for example, and it changes every single day, then I would say this backup interval should be one day between every backup. So you get the latest sales in your database. Then you want your database to be emailed to you, but you can also save it locally or only locally. As your database grows, it will take up a lot of space on your website and it's still on your hosting company. So I would go with email only because then it's separated from your own hosting account and it's the safest place to keep at home or in your digital vault. Of course, compress backup files. Here you can specify which tables should be included or excluded in the backup. These default settings are pretty good, so you should keep it like this. Or if you want to change it, scroll down here, click on one and press exclude table. And then we go to the last option in here, which is geolocation. If you enable this one and you scroll down, you can actually improve trusted devices by connecting them to an external location. Basically, it's actually saying this IP address comes from this region. And if you see someone logging in from the other side of the world, you can block it or you can see it in the logs from where it comes. You can enable this. You can open this in a new tab, sign up, get an API key, put this in, or you can use the highest degree of accuracy to use a Maxmind Geo IP2. It's all possible to use within Solid Security Pro. Most users actually won't need this, but you might be a high target and you want this, then just set it up in here. Then with the mapping feature, you can see where a login actually comes from. If you're interested in this, you can set this up with the Mapbox free API key or the Map quest APIs. The free plans are sufficient for the most users. It's a really nice feature to see where those logins come from, 
but in most cases, I don't think you need it. Then we compress on save. Then we scroll all the way up and we go to user groups in here. On the user groups, we can change the capabilities of each user on your WordPress website. The only thing to notice is if you have a lot of subscribers, then you might want to enable them to skip the two-factor onboarding process. Or else when they're downloading just a ebook, for example, or they need to register to your website, they all the time have to use the two-factor onboarding. And that might be just a little bit too hassle for just a subscriber account. And that also applies to WooCommerce customers. If your customers with every single order, they need to set up a two-factor account when they're logging in, trying to see their orders. I don't know how customer friendly that is. But you might want to enable this. Just think about this before you enable it for customers and subscribers. Then we go to notifications over here. Here we can change all notifications sent to our email. On the security digest, you will receive every single day an email about what's happening on your website. Could be very interesting. On this website, not as it's just a simple brochure website and it's very thoroughly secured. So we're not gonna enable this one. Then we go to site lockouts. I don't want to be notifi notified every single moment when someone is being locked out. So I'm going to disable this one also. Database backups should be sent to this email address or maybe another email address where you want the database backups to go to, for example, another email address. Then we get to file changes. Do you want to receive an email every time a file change is being detected. Well, that's the whole point of file changes that you want to be alerted when it happens. So you should enable this one if you want it. And then you can choose which recipients should be receiving it yourself or a custom or whatever you want. Then we go to settings export. You can change to what the subjects should be when you export your settings. The side scan results are very important to keep this on as this is the scan that's most important. So let's keep this on and just set to which people it should go. Then we go to passwordless login. Here you can change the email that goes to your passwordless login. Again, this is using email. I'm not very fond of this one. Then we have two-factor authentication. You can change the message that's being sent out. Really great. And then we have the two-factor email confirmation. I would not enable this feature as when some email address is being compromised, they receive a email with the code to log in. That's actually a security risk. And when they are compromised, they can log into your website and change everything. And you definitely don't want this option. Well, in my case, I would not advise you to give users the option. Let's go to two-factor reminder notice. You can tweak it and tune it. Very good. Then we have inactive users. Then you receive a list for users who has been active in the last 30 days and it schedules to do daily. Well, I should schedule this monthly so and send it to yourself so you know that, hey, all these users have not been locked in in the last 30 days. Let's go through them, delete them, or whatever we want to do with these users. A very powerful feature. And at last, we have the automatic updates information. And you receive an email with all automatic updates that has been gone through. Could be very useful if you have some plugins or themes that you don't completely trust when updating and you need to check if your site isn't broken. You can enable this one. And then we press save all changes. Well done. Then we go to the last options with a lot of important tweaks to be done in advanced. Here we go to system tweaks, the first setting, click on it. We need to protect system files. All these things are actually pretty good. Keep them all on. You can read what they do. They're very important. Then let's go to the WordPress tweak settings. We can disable the file editor. They're talking about this appearance. And normally there is a button here, which says file editor. You can disable this one, which is the best practice. But if you ever need it, make sure to go in here, security settings advanced to enable it again, or else you won't be able to use the file editor on your WordPress website. Let's enable it for now. Then we have the XML RPC. This is more of a curse than a blessing these days. So I would say disable it entirely. If you notice that some APIs don't work anymore with your website, for example, your bookkeeping programs or some other integrations, make sure to enable it to see if this solves the problem. If you do need XML RPC, you can enable it, but then make sure to keep this box disabled as it will not allow hundreds of username and password guesses per request. But in most cases, you want to disable this, keep this disabled. And then the REST API, use the restricted access. It's the safest method to do. Scroll down here, you can change the users if they want to be locked in with uh, email address and username or email address only and username only. What is the most safest way in here? Well, usernames are easily harvested from your website 
and email addresses are a bit and email addresses are a bit harder so you can choose email address only for this website i'm just going to use email address and username as this is not a high targeted website then we want to force unique nicknames very important and we want to disable extra user archives also important because it makes it harder to harvest users from your website then we go to the hide backend feature over there. One of the things I actually like. Enable the hide backend. And this is not going to actually add an extra layer to your WordPress website. It just makes it a little bit harder from those script kiddies who wants to hack you. And the more difficult it gets, the more easier they will go to easier targets as there are a lot of targets around. Let's change the login slug, not to WP login, but something like log me in or get logged in or let's build, it can be anything you want, but make sure to write it down somewhere because if you forget it, you won't be able to log in again. At the end of this video, I'm gonna show you what to do if you've locked yourself out or you forgot your login URL. So don't worry, I got you covered, but still write it down. Then these are all good and you can choose a redirection URL slug so people can actually see another page. In our case, we're going to redirect them to nice try. Once you have changed your login URL, remember that it's going to take a while until your browser cache has been refreshed. So you can still log in using WP Admin for the coming hours. Don't be alarmed, tomorrow it will be all fixed. Or you can check it right now by going into your browser and open a new private window or in Chrome a new incognito screen. Then go to your website slash WP Admin and you will see that you will not be able to log in again and be redirected to this URL. It just takes a while, so hang in there. Then we have the custom login action. If you're a developer, you can do some awesome stuff here. And then over here, we have the feature flag settings here. You can enable features that are still in beta or they're rolling out slowly. This one is enabled because it's gradually been rolling out. Great, you can enable this or disable it. When you're done, you click on save over there. Then we scroll all the way up. And congratulations, now we are all set. Everything has been configured in our WordPress website. Let's first go to the dashboard. In the dashboard, you can see everything you need to know from your security. You can click over here and you can change, manage your different kind of dashboard. If you want to create a new dashboard, for example, you click on here and you create a default layout or from scratch. In this way, you can actually fine tune your own dashboard for the things you actually want to see inside of WordPress. Very nice feature, I really like it. The summary of your security is in here. You have the latest in news over there, it's from Solid WP, but you can also see all vulnerabilities. I just installed a very old version of All-in-One WP and you can see that the file is now in here. The bands overview is over there, there's no one's band yet, if you have some bands, it will be shown over there. Also the database backup, and you can press backup now, and then it will actually create a new backup right there from the current time. Then we have the update summary for things that will be updated. Then we can see the active lockouts all clear. No users are locked out of your site. That's excellent. Then we have the threats blocked. Since installing this website, I already have 37 attempts for my website to be compromised. You can click over here and you can change the date period from 30 days to, for example, 24 hours or a custom date, whatever you want. Here you can see your lockouts, 50 lockouts total, IP addresses and usernames. Great. Then we have over here banned IPs. No IPs have been banned yet. And we have some vulnerable software on my WordPress website. They are yellow. This means we really have to update this. If this is red, you have a big problem. Yellow is also a big problem because we now have cross-site screen scripting right in there so it's not very safe to keep it in here and if we further scroll down we can see that we have the Matt as an administrator and this is our password strength password age two-factor enabled and last seen in 21 minutes if you don't like the way this dashboard looks just scroll all the way up and over here you can edit dashboard cards if you click on this you can remove for example the active lockouts Event IPs, you can change anything you want in here and just add in your own things you want to see. And this works pretty great. And when you close this one, you can also drag and drop all this around. And then I can just create anything I want within this dashboard. It's pretty nice and it works pretty good. 
And then we go to site scans over here. Here we can scan our website for security issues and find out how to fix them. Of course, there's nothing to see yet because we have to push on the start site scan. So click on it right now and it's going to scan our website. All right, the results are in. Solid Security Pro did a excellent job with scanning my entire website, my users, my plugins, my themes, everything. So that's really great. It has found one thing, the scan info mat has administrative capabilities, but no two-factor authentication. We're gonna do that in just a second. I'm gonna show you how that works. If you click on few details, you can remind users of it or you can mute it. If you see even more scan results over there, like inactive users or plugins or themes, you can fix them from this dashboard. Really useful. Let's go over here to firewall. Inside the firewall, you can see that we have real-time updates active. So we see immediately if something's going on. Again, change the date. We can change it to 24 hours over there. We can see what's happening. In here, we can see the firewall logs as some users try to log in as admin. We can see a different kind of IP address and the date and the time. If we click on details, you can see what's going on. This guy tried to log in as admin and it came from WP admin from Morocco. This one came from Paris, France, and also tried to log in as admin and will be immediately locked out from the system. Excellent. So the firewall actually does its job very good. If you go to rules in here, you can create new rules. If you click on this one, create rules, you, if for example, the URI equals like WP admin slash login, and then you press on end, and you can also do when the header equals or contains, for example, uh, Chrome or Linux, whatever, then take this action. I want to log it only. I want to block it, redirect it or allow it. This way you can create a firewall rules inside of Solid Security Pro, which is pretty amazing. After this, you can save it as a draft or actually deploy the rule. And also now if we go to automated, we can see that something is happening. The only one WP migration is an old version and it's available. And there we can see that Solid Security Pro with patch deck automatically protected my website from this vulnerability. So it actually works great. Let's go back to our dashboard. Now, if I want to fix my vulnerabilities, I just press on fix and then it's all fixed. When I now go to my plugins, for example, it has been upgraded to the latest version. Just with one click, now we are safe and secure again. Then we go to vulnerabilities. If all is good, you will see no vulnerabilities found. But let's scan them right now for vulnerabilities and no, nothing is found. If you have a big website with a lot of plugins and all kinds of things going on, you will see over here some vulnerabilities found and you can fix them from here. In our case, we don't have anything, so that's great. Let's go to user security in here. Here we can see all the users on our website and we can filter them over here, like admins or do they have two-factor, yes or no. And then you can get a good list of all the users inside of your website who haven't done two-factor, for example. This is a really great feature if you have a big website with a lot of users working on your website. Then we already talked about all these settings and changed them all, so they're excellent. Let's go to tools in here. In the tool sections, we can import and export our settings. Useful if you want to deploy a lot of websites. Then we scroll down, we go to additional tools, identify service IP. Well, we're gonna click on this. So that determines the list of IPs on the server. Useful so that it won't block itself out. Then we scroll down, changing the database table prefix. If you go to your database within your hosting environment, you can see, for example, that your entire database is built up on this WP underscore, and it's with every table. That's not very safe. So if an automated bot tries to target my database and wants to inject something, it's pretty easy because all the names are the same as hackers know. So we're gonna change this. Make sure to have an actual database in place before you hit this run button. Do not proceed if you don't, because it might go wrong. Let's click on run, here we go. And then the database prefix has been changed to this, Ayatikia. Let's check it out. When I now refresh this page, you can see that my database indeed has been changed to this prefix. Excellent job. Then we scroll down and we can set an encryption key. Solid Security encrypts your two-factor authentication codes automatically. If you want to reset those keys, just press this button and press on Run. This is not really necessary, but once in a while it's always good to do so. Scroll down, 
For better security and optimized performance, Solid Security can be loaded using SAMU plugin. Press run to do this and now we have loaded in. Excellent. Scroll down. Then we can check our file permissions. If we run this now, you can see all the values of the most important paths and files on your WordPress installation. As you can see, the suggestion is everywhere 755. This works great. The value is also 755. This means that no one can write these files and folders, but only WordPress can do it. And that's exactly how it should be. Then we have a warning for WP config and HTTP access. The value is 644, but the suggestion is 444. Now, the difference is 644 means that WordPress can write these files, but the suggestion is that no one should be able to write these files. This is a good practice to change this, but when you have a caching plugin like WP Rocket, they need to write to WP config and HTTP access to speed up the entire process. So I would say 644 is excellent. If you now see something else like 777 and you see red statuses over here, we have a big problem and you need to change that. You can change this using a FTP manager. If you don't know how that works, no problem. I've created a tutorial for the absolute beginner. You can find it over here, click on it and follow the steps and I'll show you exactly how to change the permissions of your folders and files. Then we scroll down. Here we have the server config rule just for your information and it also the W WP config rules are great. Here you can change the WordPress styles. You don't have to do this only if you think you have been hacked. Then you press the run or else don't do it. Then we have Security Check Pro detects the correct way to identify the user IP address. You can run it or you don't. It actually is okay if you leave it like this. And then the last thing is to go to the logs in here. In the logs, we can see everything that has been going on on our WordPress website. You can filter with all events, warnings, notices, or only the important events. In this case, we have a file change warning, 9045 added. That is because the first time upon activated, it adds all these changes to the Solid Security Pro logging tool. In here, we can click on manage settings and you can go to settings and go back to the uh, logging over there. But in here, you can press on a few details and you can see everything that has been happening on your website like this. You can see now that every single folder and file has been added into this logging system. So that's good. So the first one, you can safely ignore it because this is the way it should work. Later on, we can see more happening in here. All right, right now it's time to set up two-factor authentication for your own user. If you go to users and you go to your profile over there and you scroll down, you can see in here security, we have pass keys, two-factor authentication, and we have privilege escalation. First, I'm going to show you two-factor authentication with a mobile authenticator app, and then we're gonna use these pass security keys. I prefer these ones because this still can be hacked or compromised, but with these, you cannot remotely hack me. You have to break in my home, physical grab these keys. I've made an extensive tutorial over there to show you where you can get the keys, how the first time setup is, how you can secure your Google account, Dropbox, Facebook, everything is in that tutorial. You can go in here and press enable. If you do this now, we are over here in the setup two factor. Press on continue. And here we're gonna select the methods which we are using. I want to use a mobile app for this. You cannot click on the mobile app, but you have to click on this little tiny arrow over here. Click on it. Then you choose the device you have, iOS or Android. In my case, iOS. Then we're gonna use an authenticator app. How are we gonna do this? Select your authenticator app. On your Google authenticator app, you see over here a plus icon. Click on this one. And then you can scan a QR code over here. Click on this one. And then of course you need to point this device at your screen. And then you will see at the bottom over here, your WordPress website has been added. You see the word, the title of your WordPress website and a number. Go to your screen and click on continue. That number, we fill it in over there. It's your authenticator code. It will change every 30 seconds. So we're gonna fill it in over here and click on verify. All right, now we have enabled the mobile app. 
Now you cannot click on continue just yet. You need two methods of authentication. So the next one we're going to enable are the backup codes. I don't like the emails as I told you before. So we're going to use backup codes. Click on it. Now these backup codes are completely different from your authenticator app. So we're going to copy it all and paste it in somewhere on a safe place or better yet, print them out and put them on your desk or in your offline vault or somewhere. So you always have them on you and then we press continue and now we can press on continue and we've secured our user account with the two-factor authentication we are complete ready to go press complete again but even better than a app is of course a physical security key so go back to users and profile in here and press on setup pass key and then we press on add usb security key click on this one then windows asks you to do this press ok then we're gonna Place this key inside of the USB port on our system. I have set up a pin code for my key. So I'm going to put it in over here. And then we need to touch our key. And here we go. Then we press OK. Then we're going to name our device. I'm going to name this key the YubiKey 5C NFC number 1. And we press Done. And then we press Complete Registration. But what if I lose this one? Not safe. So that's why you need two of them. So the next step is to pick out your second one, press on manage pass keys. Then we're going to repeat the steps and press add a pass key, add USB security key, press OK. Place the key inside of your system, put in your pin code, touch the key again, and then we press OK. We're gonna give it the name, and this is my second key, so I'm gonna put number two on it. Press done. Now, after this, we have to make sure that passwordless login is enabled in security, settings, user groups, and then we go to administrators. And then we scroll all the way down. And in here, we go to enable passwordless login, but also allow two-factor bypass for passwordless login. Very important. And then we press save over here. And then we go back to users profile then we scroll all the way down and, and then we need to disable two-factor during passwordless login do this and press update profile now how does it look we go into here we go to log out and then we go to our new url to log in and then we see two different things the first one is we can use a passkey and we see a google recaptcha security on our login screen Press use your passkey, fill in your username and press use your passkey. Then connect your key, put in your pin code if you have one, press OK. And then we need to touch the security key. And there we are. Now we can log in the most secured way with our security keys. What if you locked yourself out of your website or you forgot your URL to log in again. No problem at all, I'm gonna show you right now. We can do this in two ways, or you can download the FTP program over there, follow the link to my tutorial, and I'll show you exactly how you can log in using FTP from different kinds of hosting companies, or you can use the file manager of your own hosting company. In my case, this website, mortgagediffy.com, is running on Hostinger, which is an excellent hosting company, pretty fast if you've already seen. And if you want a huge discount on this, go to the link in the description of this video and you can get a real big discount. However, if we want to go to our file manager, we go over here to Files, File Manager, right there. And we're going to access the files of mortgagediffy.com. And using FTP or your file manager, you need to look for some place called public HTML. Or when you're here, you need to look for these files, WP Admin, WP Content, WP Includes. If you see those and all these files, then you are in the right place. All right, we go to WP Content, go there, go to Plugins. Then we go to Item Security Pro. It's the old name of Solid Security. Press Rename and change the name to Broken. Press Rename. And then you go to your website again. You go over here and type in WP admin and press enter. And now you can see that you can log in again into WordPress. Use your own credentials. You won't be prompted for two-factor authentication or anything. It's just like this. Then we go to plugins, install plugins, and you can see that the item security pro has been deactivated due to an error. Plugin file does not exist. All right. Now we go back to our file manager or FTP, click on it, 
and rename it. Remove the broken like this and press rename over there. Now we go back to our WordPress website and press on refresh on the plugins page. You now see Solid Security Pro and no warnings and press activate again. Here we are, now it's activated. Now you can go to security and you go to your dashboard. In here, you might see on banned IPs that your own IP address has been banned. Click on it and then you can unban it again. After that, you can go to settings, go to advanced, for example. Then you go to hide backend, you click on this one and here is your URL again. You can save it or you can change it. You have now secured your entire website, so well done. If you're interested in how I clean a hacked website, make sure to check out this video right here as I go through the entire process of cleaning a hacked website. Also really interesting.